Good morning, lovelies. Good morning. All right, I'm going to share the personal reading I did. We're going to do this a little differently. Um, so we spoke upon the high priestess and her being amplified within each and every one of us in accordance with this moon, okay? And I mean, this is what this whole journey has really been about, is our healing, putting putting back our, ourselves to our created, natural created state. And our natural created state is the high priestess, okay? Divine feminine. So this, where we are, we are called and ex not expected, but this is just going to be within this yearning, this, this like, I don't just want to say energy. I want to say power. Okay. Um, and it's very important to really be walking in your own walk. I have a hard time or I've had a hard time in the past allowing people's insights and opinions to really get on my under my skin like ready to gouge them out because it 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 feels like an abomination I don't know I've always thought about it about abomination upon like the word but it's really just abomination upon my truth now I want to get into scripture let me go get my phone here All right, I will read this, and it is pertaining to the spiritual gifts, okay? So it's really, really, um, really important that we understand something, okay? As high priestesses, we each have, uh, like I've always said, like duty, mission. So one is not going to be the same as the other. We have to be careful to just because another's mission isn't matching with our truth, that it's not being called forth by the Holy Spirit, okay, um, because that is the truth, we all are walking this walk, but we all have individual jobs, okay, so one job is not like the next, so to think that we're all going to be saying the same thing, you know, it doesn't make sense, um, and those who think that it does make sense, or that's how it's supposed to be, they are awakened, but not enlightened okay so once you there's a difference um there is a difference when you awake you are built up to become enlightened okay so it's really important um if we've been on this walk for more than many to remember that um and I will really have to remember that because I have a lot of people trying to always correct me and it can get very aggravating, um, especially when I can devour with with evidence and truth what I am saying to be true and like literally show it to you and then take what you you're coming with and kind of devour it and show it to be something else. Right. Um, a lot of people and I'm, this is really just pertaining to scripture, OK, which. Clearly, this is where um, the negative con con connotation within my own journey comes from, um, is the judgment of others. And it's, it's, it, it is what it is. But God has really placed me into showing me, like, that I have to get over that, okay? Not just me, but who's ever watching this. You have to get over. You have to understand something. You are here to do your job. Nobody is to deter you from that. Um, just because their truth does not match what's given to you does not mean that God himself hasn't given it to them. You know, it's like we're supposed to encourage each other, support each other, but kind of mind our business as far as each of our walks, you know. I don't go around commenting and speaking, even if I see something and it doesn't match anything that I have been given. 
I don't need to tell you that. Why do I need to tell you that? Because I am enlightened and I understand that each is being directed in a different manner and direction, okay? And we should, as a, within this high priestess energy, we should all be understanding that as divine feminine. We may not um, agree fully with one another, but that's that's like having a mathematician and like a carpenter, okay? They're two different things, or like an engineer and a carpenter, okay? Because engineers are more of um what is it like the technical side of things okay the technical building as far as like um technology like the technical side of it as in a carpenter is a builder but uses his hands you understand um uses the tool to build but they're still building they're still building it's just the way that they are doing it is very differently, okay? But it doesn't stop it from still being the same thing as building something, you know, like the same common um, stance of building. So we're all here to build um, the pe those coming to the kingdom. And it's all going to be done in a different manner. So even though the truth may not resonate with our job, doesn't mean it's not also true. Okay, so now we're going to get into spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now about spiritual gifts, brothers. I do not want you to be ignorant. You know that when you were pagans, somehow, and ignorant. So you know that when you were pagans, somehow or another, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Mute idols, okay? So to the cross... Um, even when you're worshiping, like, the cross, you don't worship any cross. Like, here, here you go. Like, you don't hold tight to this materialistic thing. It's, you don't do that. All right? So anybody who's doing that is still considered, considered to be a pagan. You're holding tight on things that are external of you. All right? The cross is a visual, just a visual to make you understand the truth. That's it. But it's not the truth. It's only a tool to help you in your human mind understand. That's all. And it's a mute idol. You you can say cross, 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 but what is this cross actually doing for your spiritual growth? You understand? What does the cross do for your spiritual growth on, growth on a daily basis? Nothing. The only thing feeding you on a daily basis is the Holy Spirit, which doesn't reside in any physical, physical thing. Um, I mean, reside in, but it's not... It is not that of the physicality. You you understand what I'm trying to say? Hope I'm trying to say that right. Okay. Or I'm saying that right. Therefore, I tell you that no one who is speaking by spirit of God says Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord. And no one can say Jesus is Lord. Many people are not reading the scripture correctly, claiming that they, they know the truth of Jesus. This is my personal walk. This is what I'm led to see. This is what I'm led to speak upon. All right? I understand many divine feminine aren't led to speak upon the word because it takes a certain individual, I'm telling you, to do that. Because the persecution is coming worse to them than anybody. And I know this. I'm being built up in this. This understanding. I understand many people are not going to like what I have to say. But God is showing me that we are all gifted differently. Okay, so let's continue. Except by the Holy Spirit. Except by the Holy Spirit. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so you have to have the Holy Spirit in order to understand Jesus is Lord. And 
order to understand Jesus is true. Okay. First, you have to be awakened, built up with the Holy Spirit to understand why Jesus is born. Because of his existence, because of how he lives, because of he, his understanding of his ability to co-create on this planet as he is a creator, sent by the creator, since the beginning, a creator. Part of the Elohim, part of the angels, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit, okay? Different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. So we are going to have a different set of understanding, a different set of wisdom, okay? Um, I've even had a hard time with this in my own walk, okay? In the beginning, I was being shown, shown so many things that I was just like, this has to be the whole truth, full truth, and nothing but the truth, you know? But this is just my part of this truth that I'm being given, okay? Which is fine. Um... And I'm just here to speak that. I don't, I'm just here to speak my truth. I don't go on other people's things and say, you know, you're wrong because it's, th that would then mean that I'm not focusing on my stance, where I'm led to be, you know. Everything's a distraction, guys, so be careful. Be very careful. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Now to, e now to each, there are different kinds of working, but the same God works all of them in all men. Okay, so clearly this is even telling you the light, the dark, it's all God. Okay, all God. You They fight so against, so against the dark because they don't understand that it's from God. You, bet, you have to go through that dark to really understand really ever say you're connected to the Holy Spirit. You haven't went through the dark because you're too afraid. That's the devil deterring you from actually going into what um you're fearful of. Because there, if you were walking with the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be fearful. Or even if you were fearful, even if you had fear within your being, you're still going to go because you have more faith and trust than anything. So you can be scared, but you're going to, you still walk in that path. <laughs> so that's okay. Cause you're still doing what you are, are divine guy sent to do, you know. Now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the spirit, the message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by the means of the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kind of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each, just as he determines. Many people call him king, name of the kings of kings, do not come with any of these. They are not gifted at all. These are gifts given to the tribes. Understand that. So we will be having all different gifts. Um, and as we take these on, share them. Okay, so you're bringing in the multitude. I don't want to leave out the multitude. Like the multitude ain't going to have no gifts. No, that's not true. The multitude, they do have gifts. They're just too blind to look within and gain them from above. You understand? So it's not that they don't have them. Okay, it's not that I'm here saying ain't nobody but the 144,000 have. No, but we are the head. We are given this first to teach this truth. Okay, and then this truth is the truth will set you free. The truth, okay, so the multitude. You are setting them free by bringing this truth to light. So they can now live in this truth, making them just as one with the tribes, with the king of kings, with the Holy Spirit, the almighty, you know. <sighs> the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And look at us as the body, okay? So our our hands don't do the same thing our legs do, right? Do do our hands get mad at our legs because they're doing a completely different thing than our hands? <laughs> you know, are they sitting here arguing like, 
that's not my truth. So that can't be the truth, you know? <laughs> like, that's kind of what, what Spirit's, like, telling me. Like, I, I don't pay attention to, to nobody. Anybody coming and doing that has to do more work, okay? Um, or there's definitely sent by the enemy to deter you from continuing, you know? <clears throat> so it is with Christ. Okay, so the body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. So it is with Christ. Okay, so, and then here you go. So the Bible's telling you your body is with Christ. Oh, wow, these people are ridiculous. For, like, okay, because I don't, here's the thing that I have always gotten offended by. Not offended, but it's annoying. Because, um, I mean, you can call me whatever you want. But this new age thing, okay, so Christian uh, Christians would call me a new ager because I use cards and stuff and use the internet and stuff and blah, 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 and young, and I'm a millennial, okay, I'm one of the first millennials, um, one of the first, like, wave of millennials, absolutely, I'm, I'm 31 years old, I was born in 87, so I am absolutely a millennial who birthed a millennial, okay, this is, this is my truth, so uh, I... I I, um, used to get very upset, like, who are you to say, like, I'm wrong, you know, who, when you are the one falsifying, falsifying Jesus' truth, absolutely, and have no idea what you're doing, that's how blind you are, by, by Satan himself, by this little matrix that you've been, like, following in line, like, little, little robots, you know, and that's the truth, and, I used to get so angry with this new age, at least, I mean, I could care less if you consider yourself to be a new age or whatever, do what you do, but I'm not a new age, I'm a daughter of God, that's it, that's all, I don't know what to tell you, like, yes, I do cards, yes, I, I've understood this by the twin flame thing, yes, many, many um, concepts that I speak upon are put into this box of new age, but no, this is the truth of the kingdom. That's not new age. And at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you've never been to the kingdom. The kingdom is unknown. So everything bring, that's coming forth with the kingdom is of a new age. It's of nothing of an old age, you know? So that logic, you, you don't even watch the words that you're saying. Because, I mean, this is where I mean when I can, when I say, I will eat them up. Like, I will make you feel so dumb down. But it's not, me. this is why people get mad at, like, the high priestess. You will, if they get mad at me. But it's, why is it my fault that, you know, that's not my fault. That's not my fault that you have allowed yourself to become so bounded. You know, that's not my fault. And yes, there was one time, I don't really think I was. I've always had the armor of God. Like, I was never believing. Um, It just didn't make sense to me. A lot of things that I learned in church just did not make sense. And I was a little girl, you know. And I would say things and the adults would just, like, dismiss me. Of course, I've always been dismissed in my life, but that's because I'm a daughter of God. The devil wants to make you feel like you have no value. You have no worth. Do not speak. It's another way of raping the power of the inner high priestess within this lifetime, you know? It didn't have to be so um, extreme, like burning, cutting of our heads, literally raping. Maybe it did, maybe it didn't, but I mean, that devaluing of the voice of the high priestess has never stopped until now because we're no longer allowing it. We're no long, longer allowing that devaluing of our voices to exist. You know, so it's just really important, like, not to get angry um, or, like, if you don't resonate, just, won't, just you know, say your piece nicely. Or sometimes you don't even have to entertain that shit. It's up to you, whatever spirit tells you, okay? Because sometimes people do come to you, run their mouth, but it's for you to kind of um, put them on a string path, you know, give them correct information and then let them go there. Cause we are just planting seeds, you know? So sometimes us not speaking can, um, 
be a detriment because we're just planting seeds, even if they don't take it on then. So that's where you always follow your spirit. Do you say something um, with somebody that's coming with not negative things? Or do you just not entertain and understand that their existence is irrelevant to your work, you know? Because um, some, you just don't know. Things are going to be thrown at you. But it's, it's going to be hard to determine who is here to deter you and who is only here to learn. Because it, it can be hard to distinctively know the difference when it's just very important to be um, receptive, but yet dis discerning, you know, what you're letting in, what you're not letting in. For we are all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body. Oh, that's funny, because I didn't even read this, and I started saying that. That's weird. It would not for the reason, but I said leave. <laughs> but still. It would not for the reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body. It would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. So we have to understand that he has arranged our parts within the body as he wants to be. You know, So we might not have the same function or even resonate at all with another part of the body, you know, but does it mean that we don't need both parts of to be that whole body? You know, I have to read this every single day. Maybe we should have wake up. This is a good book to really just keep you in that understanding of, okay, all right. Knowing my part and function, not allowing another function to deter, deter me from kind of, functioning you know clearly if, if an organ stops functioning even if all the other organs are working there's a problem there's a big problem so we got to remember that um so don't be paying attention to the other organs um leading to your own dismay of dysfunction you know It's really important because when we're, we're taking on these high priestess roles, we're locked down on your functioning, your purpose. That's it. You gotta, you gotta, it's like a blinders up, blinders up, you know? And, and there are other high, like, that's your tribes in a sense. Like those who you agree with what they're saying, like that's part of your individual tribe, but there's more than one. You understand they're separate. So our spirit family is different. And maybe like, would you think the kidney is going to teach the liver? How is the kidney going to teach the liver? They do two different things. Or the liver going to teach the kidney? You know what I mean? So this is like very important to understand our personal parts. And we're here to support. Like if you're part of the kidney, you're here to, hey team, all right, let's keep making this kidney work. You know, I'm sorry my analogies, but you guys get it. But in fact, I'll do this again. And this is 18, 12, 18 right here. But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot see to the hand, I don't need you. Or the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresented are treated with special modesty. Well, all presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given great honor to the parts that lacked it. So that they should should that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, each part suffers with it. 
If one part is honored, each part rejoices with it. Okay, so we are to honor our part. As we honor our personal part within this dynamic, this mission template, what, what you know, we are honoring the other parts, you know. We don't have to focus on them. We have to honor our position, and then that naturally is honoring the rest of it. <sighs> now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed first all apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracles, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, do all interpret, but eagerly desire the greater gifts. And now I will show you the most excellent way. Okay, so this is asking a question. We're going to go into 13 because I really want to continue to read this. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clinging shamble. I guess that's... If, <laughs> if I have... <laughs> if I have a gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge. And if I have faith that can move mountains, but not love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and surrender my body to the flames, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It also protects, always trust, oh, it always protects, always trust, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there, there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy, and we prophesy in part. But when perfection comes, the imperfected, the imperfected disappears. The imperfect disappears. But when perfection comes, the imperfect disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put childish ways behind me. Now we see, but a poor reflection as in the mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part that then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Okay, so I would just read this whole book because this is this goes straight into the body of Christ, spiritual gifts, the one body, and then you're going to go into the gifts of prophecy and tongues, the resurrection of Christ, the resurrection of the dead, resurrection of the body, all right? So this is all in here, and then the collection for God's people. I don't want to read all of it right now. We're going to go to um, Daughter Wants to be Seen. Okay. The front page. Um, day five doesn't. <laughs> this is the woman at the well. Now. Um, From bondage to freedom. Wow. Okay. From bondage to freedom. And this is where we're going. You guys see that? All right. Freedom, a common theme in scripture, is contrasted with bondage in both the Old and New Testament. Freedom is liberation from the control of another person or power. 
and bondage is subjection to force or an influence. People in the Bible sought social, political, moral, and spiritual freedom. People today also desire freedom. Though they often find themselves enslaved, as Christians, we can have freedom in Christ. Because of Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but most Christians get, like, they miss the memo. This is where the truth was lost. You really devoured that memo, okay? Um, and clearly, this is a Christian study thing. So, no, this is what the tribes are bringing forth. The high priestesses are bringing forth. The, the physical sin that you want to continue to live within, it's because you're in bondage, because they're in bondage. Um, we cannot get angry with those in bondages when we have been free, free of that bondage. But it is still, listen, we're still, we're still not perfect yet. And it's hard. It is hard. So I'm just, my high priestess out here, you got to speak on scripture. 1 Corinthians 12 to the end of the book is amazing to get that strength. Okay, every single day, if you got to read it, read it. So you're not popping off at these people who are trying to persecute you, you know, <laughs> no need to do that. <laughs> All right. People in the Bible sought social, political. Okay, we read that. Because of Jesus Christ, we are no longer slaves to sin, but slaves of God. And that's Romans 6.22. The spiritual freedom is eternal. The woman at the well was a slave to sin until she met Jesus. This first century sinner gratefully received the freedom offered to all people today through faith in Jesus Christ. But you have your faith has to reside in the truth, and then that there we go. That's why most people aren't free because they don't have the truth. Little is known personally about the nameless Samaritan woman who encountered Jesus at Jacob's well. All right. And that, that's no, no coincidence. Jacob's well, Jacob's ladder, the remnant of Jacob. Come on. But much can be inferred about her from her background. Eight times she is referred to as the woman. Eight times she is referred to as the woman. And one time Jesus calls her woman. His speaking to her is significant because in the patriotic society of Jesus' day, women were considered greatly inferior to men. A woman didn't, a man did not speak to a woman in public, not even to his wife, mother, or sister. The woman's roles were strictly restricted primarily to the home and family. And asked, why do you think Jesus broke cultural rules and spoke to this woman? Because um, their cultural rules were nothing but lies provided by Satan. That's why. Jesus Christ recognized the worth of women. Although he respected Hebrew tradition throughout his ministry, he evalu oh, evaluated, no, levitated, <laughs> elevated the, st the, stat the status of women. Jesus offered salvation to women, he ministered with women, and he worked supernaturally in the lives of women. <laughs> Through public recognition, and this is why the divine feminine was first to wake up. Through public recognition of her womanhood, Jesus offered the woman at the well personal freedom. In Christ, women today can experience freedom from the bondage of self. Their personal limitations and weaknesses can be forgiven, and their lives can become vessels for service. And that's what the high priestess is all about. Okay, fine with grabbing a hold of our inner high priestess because we already know our service, and then being that vessel and actually acting upon. The service that we have been called to do. Freedom from self is one of the greatest freedoms Christ offers. Christ offers. Absolutely. All right. Here's another question. Have you thought about the obstacles self poses, obstacles self poses to a close relationship with God? Identify the ungodly desires and fleshly strengths that keep you from relying on and submitting to God. <laughs> the fact that Jesus encountered Jesus' encounter with this woman took place in Samaria is shocking. Since Jews did not speak to Samari Samaritan, Samaritans, they often avoided the area, believing the Samaritans who had intermarried with foreigners had betrayed their faith. Je Jews regarded the Sam Sam oh, Samaritans with hatred and prejudice. Jesus reached across racial barriers, offering the woman forgiveness and freedom. He also ministered to other Samaritans and taught his disciples to love them. 
Christians today can learn from Jesus how to overcome racial boundaries. Christ's love transcends racial boundaries. Exactly. So again, when they're with the 144,000 and these are the tribes and they are Jews or they are just Hebrews or they are just, okay. Again, not understanding the medical physical meaning of that biblical book. <laughs> By offering the Samaritan woman his love, or they're just men, heard that all my life. Virgin men by that. Virgin Jew men. <laughs> this is what majority of the Christians that I've had encountered in my life truly believe. Okay, they truly are dead set, and this is the truth. <sighs> but then again, they're still bounded. They're not free. Okay, they are not free, meaning they don't know the truth of Jesus, and is why they are still living within their own curse their own bondage created by themselves because they're falsificating on the word of Jesus. The Samaritan woman was immoral. Living in an adulterous relationship, she was a social outcast. She was trapped in a lifestyle, taking her further from God and isolating her from the people. Unlike other women, she went to the well at noon to avoid their judgmental stares. Though Jesus knew this simple woman's history, he chose to reveal himself to her anyway so that he could sit, set her free spiritually. His approach is, to model, is a model of effective witnessing. He responded to her in a way she could understand. Okay, so here you go. Here's the truth. We're supposed to respond to these people um, in a way they understand. Okay, this is really what I'm being worked with right now. Um, if you've watched my channel, you're like, yay, she's really growing. <laughs> I know, guys, it's taken a while, but I'm, you know, all I can do is listen and, and, and attempt, you know, and continue to trust and continue to be built up. I never say I'm perfect. I'm just like, okay, I'm, I have awareness. That's, that's where <laughs> we should all be. Knowing that she had come to the well for water to quench her physical thirst, Jesus gave her living water to quench her spiritual thirst. Jesus gave her living water to quench her spiritual thirst. Living water represents the truth mother. The woman recognized his divinity, calling him a prophet, grateful, gratefully accepted his living water, and received everlasting life. She went to the well as a slave to sin and walked away a free woman in Christ. And because we understand the truth of Christ, the, the truth of Christ that has been placed upon us by the Holy Spirit, we are too free, you know. <laughs> so don't ever be deterred. Gain your strength from biblical means and try to put things where others can understand it, okay? Because it's not about our, our personal feelings, emotional, you know, because that is evil. Um, last of that's being shed. As we're being called forth, we're learning this, all right? So, <clears throat> God is stance of today that came to me. The power that we should be um, amplifying on first day after this full moon. And then just the earthly, the Mother Earth nature aspects that wanted to kind of help us amplify this power and this goddess within. So we had received 20, 30, or what is it? 36. And where is my book? Thirty-six goddess. <laughs> um, I would try to say that name. I just do not want to devour it. Worry, Pernelli. Ah, uh, Pernelli. I have no idea. W U R I U P 
R-A-N-I-L-I. Dreamtime, indigenous Australian sun goddess, Winna Penelli speaks, sparks your hope and faith. Her flaming torch made her flaming torch symbolizes the glow of dawn. With grace, she receives and holds those dreams and beliefs in her heart as she travels across the sky daily with her torch, the sun. Brilliant sunsets are her paintings and red orchard is a symbol of remembrance to her. So we are remembering our inner high priestess. We are remembering the mother. We are walking in this. She offers you this flame to guide your heartfelt journey to your highest, your higher self's truth. Your inner healing rituals and practices of remembering. Okay, so we're supposed to inner healing rituals, practice of remembering. It's really important, like this June month, to really be working with her every single day, remembering exactly your placement within the body, your fun how to how to how to correctly function. Will summer her the oh. And practices of remembering will summon her subtle and gracious energy of light and direction. Direction, faith, hope, ritual, prayer, giving thanks, inner knowing, healing habits, purpose, goals, foresight, hindsight, communion with self, light at the end of the tunnel, responsibility, life tests, daily routines, remembering mindfulness, okay? And the power, again, is that perception, okay? Shifting our perception, understanding we are part of the body. We all have different functioning. Um, those coming to you, try to, it's about understanding them and their needs and giving them what they need to be fed because we have that ability through the Holy Spirit, okay? So that should always be our perception. No matter what BS somebody's coming with, even if it aggravates us in the 3D, you know, the ego, we understand that through the Holy Spirit, we, we have a way of teaching them, okay? So don't deter from the message by getting upset with them because they don't have this understanding. No, it's not their job. It's our job. We are the high priestess. That is our job, you know? So we are to change, to have the ability to change our perception and make it their perception, you know, so we can, so we can explain truth in a way that they can understand it. This is, this is the shift that's happening within. All right. So, so as we woken up, we were given truth and we were given ways so we can understand it. Right. That's what the divine did for us. That's what the Holy Spirit did for us. Now it's our job to pass that on and do that for another or, you know, many others. And then we got eagle. Okay. And we had this in our reading yesterday, this um, eagle, <coughs> which is communion. And we were told communion of self. <coughs> And that is within the earth magic. Here the man and the eagle make contact through their eyes and spirits. The man has performed a ceremonial calling to the eagle who now comes to him as a familiar friend. Okay, so if you did yesterday, you made your calling the high priestess. High priestess coming in and out, familiar friend, always there, you know, that's you, now you're embodied. It's an intimate relationship between human being and feather being. One of both spirit and flesh, and that's that is what we are, one of both spirit and flesh. Yet it's ultimately this deep spiritual kinship that connects them. Formed, formed from their recognition of the sacredness of this bond. And yesterday it's funny because we got the sacred bond card. Ego spirit is often associated with the highest and noblest as the high priestess is. Encouraging us to let our spirit soar. Let our spirit I gotta plug in this charger so this computer is not All right. 
let our spirits soar. Through this communion, we know that we can touch the sky. We know that we can be more than just two laid creatures clinging to the ground. We're intimately related to all of life on the planet. And it's through communion. 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 This one says communion. With any expression of life that we realize how vitally connected we all are. And that's the representation that comes from the first Corinthians chapter 12 that we read. <laughs> 12 and 13. It was 13, I think, that was speaking about the body, actually. 12 was the gifts of spirit. Um, so realizing how vitality connected we are, how each part is necessary. Even if it doesn't resonate with us, it's because it's not part of our function. Does it mean it's not from God? Does it mean it's not from spirit? Too many people who like to teach are are getting confused about that, especially when it comes to the scripture part, okay? Um, especially when it comes to the scripture part. Those who aren't called to speak upon scripture are more willing to take any and all functions on, you know? Like, they understand that part, but... Many who are still bound and don't understand that. And that's how you can tell who's bound and who's not. That understanding alone. But it is for us to understand them and then kind of place things so they can understand it as well. And not by, like, yelling at them. As they just, But during your journeys, you grow. You understand? You really do. <clears throat> and we'll end it with the Dreamtime card. <laughs> for the this is dream time and creation right for the, a burger a burger a boar rig of australia the dream time is a place before time and outside of time listen don't judge me by my reading please please do me um I don't know if I'm like dyslexic or something. I don't know if I just had pronunciation problems. I don't know. I remember when I was a little girl, I've always been like this though. I really have always been where I couldn't read, but under I understand. Like, not that I can't read. I mean, I can't pronounce the words, but I have an automatic understanding of the words, you know? So that's different than most people. Most people can pronounce words and then have no idea what the word means. I'm the opposite. I can't pronounce it, but I have a intuitive mean understanding what that word already means you know it's weird i know <coughs> <coughs> i probably spoke a lot of languages in all my lifetimes that's probably why i'm so confused the dream time is a place before time and outside of time in which ancestral spirit beings come to earth and give all of life its form once the work has was done these spirits remained in the very forms they created including the animals, hills, stars, and other features of the land and continue to be present today. The dream time is an individual or group spiritual template, including songs and stories that have been handed down for at least 60,000 years. Although a Borignese would say they've existed since the beginning of time, in what such tradition, there's a creation story involving the Didger Adu, Didger Adu, which is essentially a howled out log that emits, em, emits a droning sound when played. In this card, we see the spirit. In this card, we see that as spirit men, man, as spirit man, you see him, the spirit man. All right, plays the. Digger adieu. So I guess the digger adieu is this. Okay, so this is wow. Um, kind of familiar to Gabriel's trumpet. Oh wow, that's kind of oh my goodness, I just got chilled. The world is sung into existence. And I always said that. I always said that Gabriel's trumpet is the divine feminine speaking. This is the trumpet of Gabriel. We are creating that existence. I've always been guided to understand that.
Note that various beings and colors and structures of the land that are being created, all carrying spirit that has been bred into them. Okay, so think about it. And this is why we're really not supposed to dictate another's way of creating, okay? Because when you think within the kingdom, okay, the kingdom is the whole world, you know, the whole earth. It's going to be much, much land. And, you know, so so each each like pair, okay, hypothetically, each pair is going to have like their own land, their own dominion, their own little kingdom within the kingdom, okay? So it's, they're creating their kingdom, you're creating your kingdom, the other peers creating their kingdom, you know, it's not right to, and then when you're focusing on, hey, that's not how I was told to build my kingdom, you know, <laughs> yelling at the other people building their kingdom, you're not building your kingdom, now you're focused on these people, so now you're not creating, you've already been to tear, distracted, then you're going to go distract God's other children from, and then nothing's going to get done, so it's really part, it's really important right now in these day and age, if you understand that you're part of the tribe, you really got to walk within your walk, okay? This is important. Listen to the call made by the trumpet of Gabriel that was specifically heard by you. Yes, the call was heard by many, but what that call was is individualized, personalized to the pairs, to the twins, you know? Um, And that's what the spirit has led me to see as we take on our high priestess power today. All right. Much love.